board. So uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Prophetess Kamoy is here with me and um, we're going to chop it up. We tried to go live, but, you know, it could be um, interference in the, um, the energy because the North mm -hmm. Node energy from the Gemini um, moon is still very active, you know? Today is actually Wednesday, which is ruled by Mercury. Mm. Um, so if there's energy going on that's affecting anything in Gemini, it will play out. I, I talked about that today in the daily vibration to watching your communication because Mercury is ruling. Um, so um, Mercury rules Wednesday. So you can see like wonky stuff going on today. Yeah, with communication. So, okay, let's get into it. Um, Kamoy, again, you can tell them what you do before we get started. Yes, yeah, so I am a life coach. Um, um, I specialize in um, Reiki energy healing, not just so much of your body per se, but also your mental and your spiritual uh, capacity, right? Um, so I use my eclectic background and I do say eclectic background because it is very eclectic stemming from finances to, um, um, audio engineering to life coaching, to NLP training, to tarot cards, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? Um, so my goal is to share what I know spiritually, share what I know emotionally, share what I know energetically, um, and teach people how to master themselves themselves and take control of what they create in their lives. Um, not just on a physical level, but on an emotional level and on a mental level too, because all of those things work together to produce your reality, you know? And that's um, important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I consider myself um, a specialist in um, being, <laughs> you know, um, and being a specialist in being, you have to peel back the onions in all levels, physical, mental, emotional. So you got to go through all of the energetic bodies. So uh, which means um, things that you may not always be able to see with your eyes, you know. Um, so that is um, what I do in a nutshell. And that takes faith to see beyond the veil. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I did want to bring up or talk about a little bit is mental health, because behind the tarot cards and energy, um, the, the teaching of energy or Reiki, what you find is, is that there is emotions. And a lot of people I find they don't want to work on themselves. They want someone to do the work for them. And we're not in a season of that. Mm -hmm. Being that, you know, you brought up in your um, information this morning on Daily Vibrations that Gemini was active and to watch your words. A lot of times we'll look over that. Uh, we'll even look over the fact that we have words that are coming out that are hurting others. And some people live by that type of vibration mm -hmm. and they don't understand that some people have given them passes by um, allowing things to happen, hoping that they would learn from the way that they speak. Um, but sometimes life changes and you have to learn how to speak. So from a mental health perspective, I know that you're not a psychologist, but I think that it's important. What could you give the people from a mental health perspective in what you do? Okay, so um, first of all, let me just start um, on the avenue of Reiki energy healing, right? Um, the first thing that they teach you in Reiki is um, there's a disconnection within your um, emotions, right? Uh, in your body before right. you physically see a disease, right? Mm -hmm. So they like to teach that you first have a dis-ease within mm -hmm. yourself, within your spirit, right? Mm -hmm. um, before a disease um, pops up, right? Mm -hmm. um, within the body, there are different energy points. So let's just talk about the mental aspect because we are talking about... Um, we are talking about mental health, right? Um, so the disease within your mental health can really start within your upper chakra, right? So we're talking about your third eye, which rules imagination, right? And then we're also talking about maybe your crown chakra, which rules you beginning to get in um, um, messages and, and directions. Now, 
it's interesting because I am not a therapist by far, but this is what I want to say. Everybody hears voices, okay? Right. Um, and this is where I feel like we may not have enough in the medical area to really distinguish between, um, oh, because you hear voices, you're crazy. And well, yeah. if you don't admit you don't hear voices, but you do, you know, so everyone hears a voice. There's that subtle, still voice that comes in, right? Um, what I have discovered in um, helping people over the years is that, you create these voices in your head sometimes also based on traumatic experiences, based on an environment that you grew up in, um, based on sometimes chemical imbalances, which, you know, which then you may need to see a psychologist or, you know, uh, and get medication to bring you back into um, hormonal balance, right? Um, but even I feel within those triggers, even when you have to take medication, right, um, to bring that into balance, what triggers you is still linked to some type of trauma right or some type of environmental aspect right mm -hmm. there's something that triggers your um, mental um, breakdown or your mental um, instability right mm -hmm. now um, I like to teach that there are only three ways that you can be programmed and you can go and you can find this this information anywhere okay you know well studied and the three ways that you will program is uh, via symbolism um, via trauma or via repetition Right. Mm -hmm. So all of those things play in your mental psyche. Right. Symbolism. So um, behind of you right now, that symbolism behind of you is a picture that says a thousand words. Right. So every time someone looks at that, they can get a different meaning, which is still uh, affecting them mentally. OK. So looking at the sign of a crab can have a different um, feeling for a cancer versus a Scorpio. You understand what I'm saying? And if you have um, a bad um, a traumatic experience with a cancer mentally as far as you're concerned all cancers are evil you've now created a mental place in your mind right that all cancers are evil right or oh, all yeah. um scorpios cheat right. <laughs> you know right right now that's that's based on symbolism right, right. now let's talk about the traumatic events right a lot of people traumatically marry their parents and don't even know that you married your parents based on trauma they, you know what i'm saying based on something that you're playing in your mental capacity and what you think a relationship or a marriage should be right i saw my mom and my dad fat fight i saw my dad whoop my mom's ass so i need to then have a man that whoops my behind because that's love Right. Now, knowing that you're going on a mental picture that was placed in your, your, you know, so that's the that's the traumatic event. Then repetition. Right. Repetition comes based on that internal conversation that you have with yourself. Right. Yes. Wow. Uh, and, yeah. You know, um, so you're repeating. I'm not worthy. Nobody's going to love me, you know, and then but but then still going back. What I learned is all of these things can be connected to your childhood. So if you want to heal anything from a mental state of being, you got to go back to childhood. Mm -hmm. You got to go back to the places that you tend to hide from, right? So uh, what I bring to my clients is really, if we can get into you and, and, and get into your childhood and get into where you may have had trauma, get into where you may be repeating some things mentally that's not matching where you wanna go. Let's get into maybe some of the symbols that you see and then reflect back different things to you, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I think you have to look at not just one aspect of things, but you gotta look at things as a whole. You know, you have to look at things as a whole. So everyone that operates on the avenue of a narcissist or operates on the avenue of an abuser, there is a link to that, that, that you know, um, some of that is learned behavior. Some of that is rep repetitious behavior. Some of that is through symbolism, you know? So that is definitely, and we are programmed like that mentally every day. This is how you project mentally every day. You are programmed to think a thing, feel a thing, do a thing, <laughs> you know? Um, so whoever controls you mentally also controls you emotionally. Whoever controls you emotionally also controls you mentally, you know? Yes. So you can't really balance one without balancing the other, to be honest with you. At least that's my, that's my, <laughs> that's what I've learned along the way. Um, and that's what I teach, you know, you got to balance both of them. So I want to um, just give some statistics and um, my background is behavioral health. Um, you know that, of course, but mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people to ask 
or say they didn't know. And it's on my profile on Facebook for those that want to go and look. I know that we have to build a trust with the communities. And one of the things that me and my son was talking about is um, a, a person that committed suicide just last week. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you stop that is what the conversation was around. And I said, it is around getting the information out, but we're in a high impact, impact time mm -hmm. of mental health escalating and suicide. And so, you know, he said, mom, the, the thing is, is that you can put the information out, but people don't trust. And I believe that we have to get to a place where we reach out uh, rather than just saying that I don't trust. Look for somebody as in right now we're talking. I do know therapists. We do coaching. And the skills that I have is to work with an individual as they're coming out of or uh, stabilizing the mental health condition when they're getting back on meds or they're finding the homeopathic way to okay. stabilize the um, condition. Here, I would tell everyone that myself, if I don't follow the right regimens and I, if I have the wrong people in my life, depression is triggered in me because it is a DNA cellular factor within my family. Some people don't acknowledge it. And I begin to talk about it simply because I feel like if I can address the public and tell people about my own circumstances, then they will be able to get help. Because one of the things is most people are not transparent when they are talking talking or teaching, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And because that is a part of my background, um, I feel like it's necessary, which is why I went into the behavior health field. I didn't go into, or I did go into therapy, but um, I, spirit put me in another direction. I don't think I was, you know, created for regulations such as the system. Um, I do know that I work well as a builder. And when you know what you do well, then you do that. And Therapists can't always get into the fact of telling people how to build themselves. And so that falls under the, the guidelines of skills, seeing the skills in a, a person such as yourself and working out of the skill to build you into what you are called to be. So the statistics here for just say three to 17, it says 73.8% uh, of three years old to 17 years old and children have depression. And this is um, with the CDC. Um, it says, three. yes, mm. seven, you might as well say 74%. That's a mm. big percentage just in ages three to 17. And what are the issues behind it? Well, we won't just talk about it. We're going to look at a little bit more because we know that a lot of um, these um, individuals can be in households where there is um, mm -hmm. economic wealth, but a lot of them do not live in economic wealth from three years old to 17. Then you have the battering, the abuse, as you spoke of, and each child will uh, look at the circumstances according to their psyche and the strength or the weakness mm -hmm. will uh be the factor that determines it within them if they're going to suffer or be triggered by a mm -hmm. mental health issue that may also be in the DNA, right? And so even when you go down, um, you're looking at ADHD, anxiety, depression in mm -hmm. children from two to 17 years old, it affects over 6.1 million. Now, this is where you start getting the attention of the masses because I was looking at, you know, people from 20 to 40. And when I got in here because I had to go get food, I, I brought up children and this is our generation. So we want to begin to look at it and looking at it will help us to um, save the generations, which is what we are actually here to do. You know, um, at my age and your age, we're looking at what's going to change our family dynamics. And that same thing is going to change um, community dynamics. Some people don't want that responsibility. But in most cases, um, if you are doing Reiki healing and you're doing tarot card reading, what is the message behind it? So, um, so this is my, uh, my message. Um, I believe that um, I have 
maybe the steps, you know, um, mm -hmm. or the skill sets um, to, okay, so let me give an example of uh, Reiki energy healing. And I'm, I'm gonna give a, an example of how it can work and for, for one person and how it can maybe not work for next, okay? Um, I believe at the end of the day, everybody is responsible for saving themselves because we can disseminate the information. But if you do not take in the information and do not do the steps, you know, and show up to the gym to work out with the trainer, then you're not going to lose a weight. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just, you know. Um, so I've had to learn not to take on the responsibility of saving people because then that makes me feel like um, if somebody doesn't take the information, that makes me feel like I have not done what I came to do, right? Um, so I feel like what I do is I give people the gift of um, here, this information is you and I can guide you in how to use it, use it, right? So in Reiki healing, you can have a session with someone where you totally clear out their energy path. You unblock the, sh the heart chakra, you unblock the throat chakra, you unblock all of these um, chakras, and they are fine. Like, they are fine walking around for months. They are fine, okay? Now, it is not my job to maintain, right? Um, um, uh, it's not my job to maintain the aspect of how um, you stay connected with yourself, right? So once I've cleaned the chakras, right? Or I come in and I, I, and I do the full cleaning and I organize, right? If you are not putting each piece back in its appropriate place when you're finished with it and you're still leaving everything messy, AKA, if you're not speaking your truth, AKA, if you're not checking yourself and dealing with your emotions, AKA, if you're still lying to yourself, right? Then we get back into the dis-ease again. You understand what I'm saying? Then you wanna know why your throat is hurting you all of the time. A, because you're probably lying to yourself and others, right? B, if you understand, you're probably not communicating properly, right? Then you want to know why you have bronchitis infection. So all of these things really come from aspects of you not dealing with yourself, right? So mm -hmm. I teach in Reiki is I can clear and block these chakras for you, but it is your job and it is your responsibility to really um, save yourself. Everyone is responsible for their own salvation. You understand what I'm saying? Um, study to show thyself approved, which meaning you need to study yourself to free right. yourself. You right. understand what I'm saying? This so, is something. So, so what I really give back to people is you have the power to free yourself. You have the power to save yourself. We are here as a support system for each other, but you are here. Yeah, to, to, you, you have to save yourself. What's that saying? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, right? right. So, yeah. In essence, the, the time and era is what we've been working towards because what you're saying is you are working to give an understanding of every individual's ability to heal themselves. Exactly. You are not their God. You are their own, your own God and goddess. So in lieu of what's being said, what I find is, is that the message is all around the Gemini energy because you brought up the voice. And and you say something, um, uh, uh, Prophetess Kim, and I, I say that, I, I emphasize that because a lot of people has a complex of um, they want to be saved, but don't want to do the work. You know what I'm saying? Um, the reason why people want to be saved is because that has been a social uh, issue. The social issues that we have has been that someone else empowers us. Mm -hmm. We did not have, and this is not what I claim, um, it's been a long time before the message could come through me and um, say, I came here to be a freedom writer. You know, I was born in 1964 when the protests mm -hmm. were going on that began to escalate this year. Something inside of me throughout the years led me, and it was God in me, the goddess, led me to begin to study the religions, but I saw through, I, I read beyond the veil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So here you have a message that they didn't even receive when the guy that you're reading about was giving it to them. No disrespect to the spirit of Christ because it, it's an awakening factor, but there are mysteries to everything. And while many people have given up on being free, there are many such as yourself and myself that see we can work with you on your freedom, but you have to be responsible and you have to be accountable. So in the message today, 
one of the things that I've had problems with and people looked at me strange and yeah, I'm on a path where uh, it's a tra trailblazer type of path. You know, mm -hmm. trailblazers, excuse me, they don't have people that actually lead them. They, they're in a forest and they're breaking down trees to make a path of their own. So I've studied um, theology, degrees in that, in case someone needs to know for trust issues, because for some reason they trust paper and the paper does not make you great. It's what's in your heart. So theology, and psychology, that was the path that, you know, my uh, God is, my God told me to take because people want to check your background. Mm -hmm. but when they check the back background of people that didn't do what they were supposed to, where are you at? So here, then you go into astrology. And what I find is the three of them integrated like yourself, they work to make people better. You are observing people and you are able to give an information or information to people that they've never heard before. Mm -hmm. You're not a pathfinder, you're a trailblazer. Yes. Yeah. You're setting it's, a fire yeah. to open up a way for people to get things that they hadn't before. And one of the things that people don't have is what tarot gives them. Hmm. Tarot gives you an understanding of history because tarot started back in the Roman Catholic era when they were uh, having the dark night uh, or the, uh, the dark Christian um, wars, hmm. which is what Pisces is about. But I want to get back to Gemini because we only have like five or 10 minutes left. In here, we're talking, you brought up the voice and Gemini is about communication. Everything that people are doing right now is where they want to communicate. They want to communicate about how they feel. And some yeah. people with mental health issues are not able to, even some of the statistics with these children that we uh, spoke of on the CDC statistics, they're not able to speak. And so that frustration is uh, lying up within them. And then after that, what happens is you find if it's not dealt with, you got people that are escalating and mental health issues are going into bipolar because there is no polarization or balance within okay. the individual. So with your voice, you need to speak. You need to communicate. I need to communicate. We need to be able to hear each other. We need to um, let each other know that I feel what you're saying. And this mm -hmm. is a time where a lot of people, families and relationships have broken up. But the communication era is helping them to actually see where their breakdown was. You brought up narcissism. Narcissist believes that it can do anything because everyone is supposed to hear it. And I will say it because it's in women and men. Mm -hmm. When you believe that everyone has to hear you, eventually that is going to come to an end because you only have a season to operate in that behavior, right? Yes. That yes. behavior calls attention to you. And then there's a season that comes where the attention is no more. And mm -hmm. so what am I saying? Because everything in life is about balance. The child that is frustrated, that has anxiety is being shut down. And so they have this nervous energy going on. You could go into the natal sign and find uh, the natal chart and find more. But the thing is, is that our behavior calls forth a, an action, even from the universe. So if anyone is in a place where they're not able to be heard right now and they have people where they are listening to you, people actually admired you. I'm just I'm giving an example. Mm -hmm. But you did not. You weren't grateful for people that were there that heard you. You shut them out. And now your experience is shut doors. But people that are in relationships where they have been break down, it's time to examine yourself. What did you bring to the table? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you are finding a lot of that unfolding now, especially from since this lockdown happened, where you have a lot of people now um, are confined to these spaces with each other where you can't run anymore. You know what I'm saying? There's no way to go anymore. So, honey, yeah. you know, I'm going now we have no choice but to deal. So what you found, um, what you found in this energy, you know, and um, we've been talking about 
we've been talking about this energy in the way years before this came in, you know, yeah. me and you've been talking about this energy and right. even going up to the top of the year. And I got to say, you for years you kept echoing um, tribes and community um, were going to be important. Um, uh, we kept echoing that there's going to be a, a time you're going to have to trust yourself, like trust your spirit. You're not going to be able to trust anything else but that, right? So part of being able to trust yourself and trust your spirit is exactly that, right? Being able for you to say, what did I bring to the table? How did, how, how was I the common denominator in the demise or the destruction of this relationship? How did I self-sabotage myself here? You know, um, and, and then what I say is this too because it will try to creep back in in different ways. You think you healed it and you checked it one way and then it comes in in another way, you know? One of the things that I, I had to master was procrastination, right? So procrastination will come in the form of, oh, I don't feel like doing anything. Well, I'll do it tomorrow, you know? So I got over that. Now I do my list, you know? I got my list going, right? So now, you know, and make sure I got the date and everything so that way I can go back and check, oh, okay, well, on this and this, so there's, there's a history right now procrastination for me and I caught it. Can okay, look at how I caught it, right? I caught my procrastination in perfection, wanting things to be perfect, yeah. which means I couldn't upload a video, right? Until I edited perfectly, right? I couldn't release any content until I spell check everything and it had a certain look and I had a certain app, you know? And then one day spirit said, uh, you do know that's you still procrastinating, right? Right. That's me looking at myself. Right. Because it is within your imperfections that you're perfect. Yeah. We are not in a world that everything um, is um, perfect to the natural and naked eye. Right. Um, it's within the imperfections that you find perfection. But you can't find perfection unless you check yourself. Look at yourself. You look outside of yourself everywhere else for everything. But you don't understand that you could be the own comedy nominator as to why you are having dysfunctional relationship. As right. to why, yeah, as to why right now in recognition mm -hmm. season that we're in right now, as to why nothing seems to be working out for you. You right. planted seeds of narcissism. So yeah, you got to look at yourself. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I can't call on anybody over here because when, when they needed me, you understand what I'm saying? I was too busy thinking about myself. So now you reap the whole bunch of seeds or, or, or not thinking about what you say or how your words hurt people. Then you look around, you got a whole bunch of dead friendships, you know, dead bodies, which I call dead friendships, dead relationships, because you have not taken responsibility that when you get anger building up, you can be verbally abusive. Where does that come from? Yes. And it, I from? think, it's, it's, it's so important for every person to do face value in that area because we've all had seasons of dead bodies around mm -hmm. us, but we learned from the season of isolation and also the season of nothingness, which is mm -hmm. in a dark space. You know, sometimes you can come out of the darkness, but you will not come out of the darkness if you don't learn how to treat people because we are inter interdependent people. We're mm -hmm. not dependent, we're not codependent, mm -hmm. unless you want to be in that toxic type of energy, but we are interpersonal people that need what each other has. That means that I learn mm -hmm. how to communicate with you through your positive communication, mm -hmm. if that's what I know from within myself, if mm -hmm. I have reprogrammed myself, because 90% of all of America is under, um, mental health challenges because they're they're affected by some toxicity that they have not been able to overcome by themselves and then people mask by being priority mm -hmm. and when I say priority I mean I teach myself how to be first some people fake it until they make it but the insides is not faking it you tremble mm -hmm. inside because you really don't know yourself then you are unfortunately you you're hating other people that have come to themselves and meaning that they've realized who they are. And so the, the wonderful thing about life is, is that you have a choice to be who you want to be or be who, yes, who you're chose to be. And that is a false person or a authentic person, a false self or authentic. And the people that have false uh, representations tend to have a mental health challenge because they operate mentally dysfunctional. So then you look at the word dysfunction and I think we brought it up last week, but going further into it, the dysfunction 
cannot leave if you don't work on yourself. Yes. yes. And you will not have fulfilling relationships if you don't fulfill yourself. Yep. 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 So this is where you know we can take it into the next into next week at this time. We're gonna try to do the streaming uh, yeah, again. Yeah. And because uh, we're at 12 or yeah, 12, 17 mm -hmm. right now. And um and maybe I, we can talk about the difference between self selfishness and selflessness. Yeah. Because when you know yourself, you can be selfless, mm -hmm. which means That's still true. stay in your boundaries and stay in your ground and be kind and giving and loving, right? Yes. But if you don't know yourself, you can't stem over into a, a space where you 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 know um where you where you're where you're selfish. Now sometimes yes. depending on your walk, selfless selfishness is required. Sometimes yeah. depending on where you are. So, but it's great to get a good understanding between the difference, you know, yeah. um, and then you can apply it correctly when it needs to be applied, you know. Yes. So, and that's where the um, balance comes in. So, um, Prophetess Kamoy, you can find her at For Your Inner Voice on YouTube and at um, on in Instagram. Instagram for Your yeah. Inner Voice. Any of the um, major streaming podcasts, you can also find me. Um, uh, the vibrations are up, and I also have different topics that you're not going to find in any other platform. So, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you can find me for Your Inner Voice, Spiritual Chef on those platforms also. Yes. And right now, I have a um, four week course on um, executive coaching that you guys could purchase if you're looking at changing your career. Um, yesterday, um, I made a decision to do a class that starts, um, I'm going to give the information on the day that it starts, but it's probably going to be on demand is mirror, mirror on the wall. And so you got to find who's the fairest of them all, because if you don't, that means that you can get left behind. Now you think about that and stay tuned to watch our um, broadcast and we love you. Uh, we bless you. And stay classy. <laughs> yeah, love yourself, honey. Some yes. love. That's what it's all about. Okay, yes, we're going to see you guys next week.